So we've been talking about finding the tangents to functions. So for example, if I had the tan if I wanted to find the tangent to the natural log of 1 plus x at x equals 0, we need the points in the slope of the tangent. Well, the point, my x is 0. If I plug 0 in for x to my function, I get the natural log of 1, which is also 0. Then the slope of the tangent is the derivative of the function. The derivative of natural log of 1 plus x is 1 over 1 plus x. Plugging in 0 tells me that the slope when x is 0 would be 1. So the equation of my tangent would be y equals x. That's something that you're used to doing, that you do very well by this point, hopefully. But kind of graphically, I wanted to talk a little bit about what's happening. So we have the graph of our function, and we have the graph of our tangent. And what I want you to kind of pay attention to is what's happening near our point of tangency right here. For our point of tangency, and note that my scale, I'm counting by point 0.1 on my x and y axes instead of by 1, so they're by tenths. When I'm close to the point of tangency, my tangent is very close to my function. And this can be an advantage to us because then this, can, this means we could actually use the tangent to make estimates of function values. So for example, let's say I wanted to know f of 0.1. In other words, I want to know what the natural log of 1.1 is. Well, I don't know the natural log of 1.1 off the top of my head. However, what I can notice is that at point 0.1, my tangent is very close to my function. So I could say, I may not know what this is exactly, but I can estimate it using my tangent we should say this is about 0.1. And this is really useful for us because using plugging things into linear equations is much easier than plugging things into logarithms. The issue is the further away we get from our point of tangency, the more error we have between the function and the tangent. So by the time I'm out here at point or at one, there's a big gap between my function and the tangent. So what we can do is, instead of saying just a tangent line, we can start working with polynomials and try to get polynomials that can be used to estimate a function. So kind of working with that natural log of 1 plus x, uh, we could use y equals 0, which is just a horizontal line through our point of tangency. That's not a very good estimate. It's really only close to the function at the point of tangency using a tangent line that we just looked at, our function and our tangent line are close as long as we're really close to the zero. But let's say I then expanded and said, well, not just y equals x, I'm going to go ahead and then subtract x squared over 2. And I have a parabola. And if you notice, I'm still going through that point of tangency, but now I have a little bit more region where my function and this red parabola are close to each other. So I could use, I have, can get better estimates of my function using this parabola rather than the line. Well, then if I take my parabola and add on an x cubed over 3 to get a cubic, I get even more of a match between the function and this cubic curve. So I can, I have even more x's that I can use plug into this cubic polynomial rather than into the logarithm to get estimates. And then if I take my cubic and subtract x to the fourth over 4, again, I just get a better fit. And I can use the polynomial rather than the logarithm for even more x's. The idea of making polynomials to estimate functions is what's called a Taylor polynomial. And these are polynomials that are used to estimate functions near a point of tangency. Uh, and when we talk about Taylor polynomials, we refer to them by an order, so like a first order, second order, third order, and so on. And the order refers to the degree of our Taylor polynomial. And the way we build these is with this lovely uh, equation, well, expression, I should say. What it is, is we, we have to have what we call a center. So 
the point of tangency is what we call the center. This is what we're putting in the middle and we're saying we know that our polynomial is going to go through this point on the function and then things close to the center, x values close to the center, I can plug into the polynomial as an estimate for the function. So the way we do this is I'm going to take the function value of a divided by zero factorial. Just in case you forget, zero factorial is defined to equal one. Then taking that quotient times x minus a to the zero power. Then I'm going to do the first derivative with a plugged in over one factorial times x minus a to the first power. Plus the second derivative with a plugged in over two factorial times x minus a to the second power. If I kept going to a third order, I'd have the third derivative with a plugged in over three factorial times x minus a to the third power. So what it is is we're adding up terms where we're doing an nth derivative with a plugged in over n factorial times x minus a to the nth power. So we do have a pattern to how we build these. And we'll actually on the next video go through an example of how we make one of these polynomials.